Good morning. I've got a big idea. And my big idea is that you rock with asset-based thinking. And this is going to be kind of an interactive session. So I'd like for you to, every time I say you rock with asset-based thinking, I want you to say back to me, we rock with asset-based thinking. So let's try it. You rock with asset-based thinking. Fabulous. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is ROCK? ROCK stands for resilience, for optimism, and for confidence. Those are the things you need when you're driving towards success. And asset-based thinking, what does the world, does that mean? With asset-based thinking, you grab your spotlight of attention and you shine it on the positive facts of whatever's happening what's working, what's strong, what's best, what's possible. Now that's in contrast to what we call deficit-based thinking. Deficit-based thinking is really much more automatic and it, it has us preoccupied with what's problematic, what's weak, and what's missing. We don't really want deficit-based thinking. We asset-based thinking, and so I'm actually going to ask us to do something together. I want you to learn something new, and as you learn something new, we're going to see how asset-based thinking, ABT for short, and deficit-based thinking, DBT for short, shows up. So I'd like for you to stand up. We're going to learn something new that's actually going to bring you some energy. That standing up feels pretty good, doesn't it, about right now? Now, I'd like for you to separate into the aisle just enough so that you can put your right arm out without hitting anybody. So will you do that for me? Right arm out without hitting anybody. Fabulous. So this is what we call a Feldenkrais technique. Comes out of that tradition. And it's called an integration exercise. And we're going to do three simple movements on our right side to the count of six. I'm going to show you just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody can do that, right? Let me turn around. Let's see what, if you can do that and count out loud with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. Now, on the left side, even simpler. Two movements to the count of six goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got that? Absolutely. Now, I'm going to turn around, and we are going to do the right side first, then the left side, and then guess what? We're going to put them together. That's why it's called an integration exercise. How many of you are currently having a deficit-based thought? <laughs> Trust your bodies. Let's try it. I'm going to turn around so you've got a good role model. On the right side first, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the left side. One, two, three, four, five, six, together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. How many touchdowns did we have? Have a seat. Have a seat. So here's the truth. Congratulations. Even if you didn't do it perfectly, you probably have more energy. And the truth is that whenever we learn something new, there are moments when we feel that deficit-based thinking. This is a problem. I can't do it. I'm not coordinated. This is too much. I'll never get it done on time. And that really creates anxiety. It creates a sense of being one down. and. Sometimes we even give up. But the thing that we're going to find out today is in that same situation, there is something that you can find that's interesting, something that you can do. So you were all able to do something in the six count. And that can lead to feelings of, wow, this is, this is awesome. This is a challenge, and I'm up to it. This is the foundation of you rock. Resilience, optimism, and confidence. So as we move forward to learn some strategies, I want to just remind you that if you think about asset-based thinking and deficit-based thinking as channels in your mind, ABT, DBT, you have the remote control. 
you are able to shift at will. And we're going to talk today about how to achieve the five to one ratio. You know, this conference is all about balance, and I have to say to you that I'm gonna give you something that might feel slightly out of balance, but it's gonna be fabulous for your resilience, optimism, and confidence. It's called the five to one ratio. I want you to learn how to spend five times more interest and effort on what's working, what's possible, and what's strong. So I've got three strategies in mind, and let me just ask you, have you ever felt like that mouse? This is a resilient strategy. You know, some days are like this, when it feels like the day is on top of you, you're not on top of it. And so what I wanna give you is a two-part technique that will allow you to shift out of those first thoughts, like, I'll never get through this day, to shift to ABT. Many of you love uh, improv theater. If you're like me, I do. And one of the reasons that improv is so funny and so interesting is what they call the yes and principle. So whatever the actor before you does, you say mentally, yes, and, no matter how goofy it might be. So if you look at a day and it's really turning upside down and you're not moving forward, I want you to say the phrase, yes, and. So say that with me. Yes, and, and that's transportation to an asset-based thought and strategy. And here it is. I'm gonna ask you to put your right arm straight out, so do that with me. Move it down, turn it out and away from your body and push. Again, don't hurt anybody next to you. Arm down, palms out and push. And here's the phrase that allow you to shift. Aside from all of that, I can solve this anyway. Do that with me. Aside from all of that, I can solve this anyway. So it's not a perfect day, but yes, and aside from all of that, I can solve this anyway. If you'll do it one more time, I can certify you. Aside from all of that, I can solve this anyway. Fabulous. Don't go anywhere without that strategy. Now I want to give you something that will increase your optimism. It's a practice that I would like for you to think about doing five times a day. It has to do with looking for what's working, looking for what's interesting, looking for what is beneficial and valuable and worthwhile, and then taking a picture of it and letting it savor and sink in to your mind and eventually your brain. So the technique I'm calling is for is scan, snap, savor. Scan the environment, take a picture of it, and then savor it for 30 seconds. We have evidence from the new neuroscience that if you will scan, snap, savor, you can develop new asset-based thinking pathways in your brain that will strengthen ABT and help you get out of DBT more quickly. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about this morning. There have been speakers, there have been musicians, there have been videos, there have been fabulous activities outside. Scan and then snap, stop at something that you really liked, something that was enjoyable. So everybody do that. Everybody have one thing. There might have been two or three, but pick one. Everybody got that? Take a snapshot out of it and then savor. Savor has to do with letting your mind marinate in that enjoyment. Remember it, relive it, recall it. And that 30 seconds that we're now doing this right now, you're reliving it, you're re-experiencing it, you're savoring it, will actually create new neural networks in your brain that are asset-based in nature. And it will allow you, therefore, to shape what we call implicit memory, your assumptions, your beliefs, your expectations. And that's what optimism is all about, to believe that there is a way to live a worthwhile, valuable, beneficial life just by selecting out what is possible. And in terms of our last strategy, this is my favorite one for you today. It has to do with uh, noticing 
Who is on your Mount Rushmore? Now, we all know that monuments like Mount Rushmore are built to celebrate leaders, people who we admire. And I'd like for you all to realize that you could actually have your own personal Mount Rushmore. And that's a good thing to do, finding people who you admire. So I'd like for you to think about one person in your life who's alive, uh, could be a parent, could be a teacher, a coach, a peer, a family member, somebody who you know and you admire and I'd like for you to think about the characteristic that you admire in that person. So select one person. Think of the characteristic. Could be their determination. Could be their confidence. Could be their patience. Could be their loving attitude. Does everybody have one? Great. Now I'm going to give you a secret. I'll tell you an asset-based thinking principle that most of us are not aware of. It's this. When you admire something in someone else, you have it in yourself, or else you couldn't see it. I'm going to say that again. When you admire something in someone else, you have it in yourself, or else you couldn't see it. Think about that for a minute. That quality, the determination, the confidence, the patience, the loving quality, you actually have in yourself also. It might be just a glimmer, but you've got it. And an asset-based thinking strategy is to go ask that person, how do you do that? How in the world do you do that? I want to do that. And when you ask the person that question, they'll be thankful, and it will give you insight into what you can do to develop that quality in yourself. So I'd like for everybody to look deeper and to find that asset-based thinking self you have inside of you and know that no matter what happens, aside from all of that, we can solve it anyway. Thank you.